Well, good evening, and welcome to Spotlight Show, believe it or not, number 19. Uh, Happy New Year. I'm Rich Rebecca. I'm filling in for our regular host, uh, Jan Loiter, who's, uh, I believe, on vacation this week. Uh, tonight, we have a very unique uh, program for you. Um, it's two separate groups of individuals in this town that actually blend into one another, and one group uh, works with the other, and the other group works with the other, and they're all one and the same. Yeah. <laughs> and what, what we have are representatives of the, um, the Foundation for Restoration here in St. Genevieve, and we also have representatives of uh, the uh, King's Ball. Now, a year ago, uh, we started off uh, after the introductions with the, uh, the information on the King's Ball. I think we're going to switch it up a little tonight and start the show with uh, members of the uh, foundation, and and they can give a little background history. And but before we do that, what I'd like everyone to do is to introduce yourself and um, just mention a little about your involvement um, with, in the case of the foundation, um, and Jack, if you're involved with the, uh, you know, with the uh, King's Ball as well. We'll start on this side with with uh, Jack. We'll work around the table. We'll we'll end up with Mickey, and then. Uh, we'll start the uh, the the, the Q and A uh, portion of the show. Okay. So, so I'm I'm Jack Ketting, and, and uh, I'm the executive secretary for the Foundation for Restoration, and I also work with the King's Ball Committee as far as move this here, move that there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've I've been the secretary for the foundation for about the last uh, six years now. So. Cool. Thank you. And I'm Bob Mueller, and I'm a member of the foundation. I'm past president, uh, served on various committees, and try to stir up trouble every now and then. But uh, <laughs> it's all in good, good fun. Uh, do enjoy the King's Ball, from the decorating on the Thursday night before to the evening. And uh, I've been blessed, my wife and I, to be the Chevalier and, and the Dom one year. So a great honor. And I'm Sarah Menard. I'm currently the president of the Foundation for Restoration. And uh, my involvement in the King's Ball is that I am not officially on the King's Ball Committee, but I uh, assist with the decorating, and I am a farmer Ladon. Uh, my name is Ellie Douglas, and uh, Mickey and I have been co-chair of the King's Ball for I don't know how many years <laughs> I've forgotten. Yeah. And I also am a member of the Foundation and have been for quite a quite a few years so and i'm mickey cutting and i've been co-chair with ellie for it's probably 25 something something like, like that give that range 25 30 uh, but i've been on the committee going back to 1976 or 77 and uh and have we both have been la dames at the at the uh, ball and um uh, also, I'm on the on the board of the foundation and have been since '92, and have and am, am a, and am a past president of the foundation, and I'm still on the board of the foundation. So. It wouldn't be the foundation without a Ketting on the board. That's right. From the very say, beginning, we, there has always been a Ketting on the board. <laughs> right. And if we want to know the ties that bind, I think it must be Mickey that she gets involved with something and drags everybody else along with her. <laughs> that is it. She drags yeah. and goes, oh, Sarah, yeah. this is you could help me with. Exactly. <laughs> that's why the Jack gets dragged in. That's why Bob yeah. gets dragged yeah. in. That's yeah. why Sarah gets dragged in. And that's how Ellie got dragged in. <laughs> so. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Well, folks, thank you for, for giving up a, a, a night, uh, you know, to be with me and our, our viewership. Uh, there's. There's a history with both events, you know, with, with the event, with your organization. Um, I'm kind of getting the feeling already after a few minutes that things are just going to kind of blend together. So um, let, let's start off with, um, and we're the not going to talk about what we talked about before. <laughs> no, 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 before the cameras went live. No, no, no that's, no. that's, and I'm going to my grave with that information. Yeah. Um, but um, something I found out in, 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 in my seven years here in town is um, just because, because a, an organization exists, 
a lot of people don't know the history of it, that are unaware of um, the day-to-day -day influences that the organization has. And what I'd like to do is, is just throw this out for the, and again, the foundation people and the, and the, the King's Ball people are one and the same, but let's focus in on, on, on the history of the, uh, the foundation. Um, I'm you like, know, right yeah. from right Bob, from the Bob's our historian, so we'll yeah. Uh, the foundation was started in 1967, so we're going to be 52 years old this, this September, and it was a group of people that that wanted to help preserve the architectural treasures and the culture of Saint Genevieve. Uh, people like Lucille Bosler, and there were uh, Kevin was on there, and I think uh, Hannaford was a lawyer. Um, yeah. And they got together and they formed this not-for-profit group and, and it had a mission um, to preserve not only some of the real estate but some of the personal property uh, and we considered it mostly documents though we could collect ships according to our <laughs> charter yeah. Um, yeah we haven't done that yet but but to collect and preserve these things and not just put them in and let them sit uh, the job was also to educate the public about St. Genevieve, the mid-Mississippi Valley, the importance of, of, of what happened here. Uh, most people think Missouri started with Lewis and Clark and the Louisiana Purchase and they ignore the 65 years before that uh, and they don't teach French, the French being in America because the French lost the French in the war. So part of it's kind of really trying to focus in on what our history really, really is here. And the other thing was to uh, educate and to, to promote uh, this history. And, and that we own property over the years. We own the academy. Um, several, we've owned a couple other buildings, the Lala Madeira House that John yeah. Carroll yeah. has restored. Uh, has restored. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I guess the, the main things that we do uh, is the operation of the Gibor House for tours. And, and we have a lot of school kids, and that's what's really fun, especially kindergarten kids. I like them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it's part of it's when we talk about the continuum of St. Genevieve history. You have the, you know, the Bolduc House is kind of like the end of the colonial period, and then you have the Gibbard House, which is really Lewis and Clark, Louisiana Purchase time period, and then you have Helix Valley, which is 1818 and, and the post. Lewis and Clark, so we really kind of fit into that niche of, of history, and uh, that takes up a lot of time, uh, and a lot of effort, and a lot of money. Uh, it's hard to make money in an old house. We'd like to have more people come through, and part of our job is to make it more inviting, like what you're doing with the museum. Uh, and you might mention that that house is the one directly across from the Parish Center. It is number one, North 4th Street. It's right over here on the corner. Right. That's the Keyboard Valley. And it's a French vertical log post on sill, built in 1806, and uh, it's a lovely piece of property. It's got a beautiful garden with a big linden tree in it, mm -hmm. and um, just, uh, it's, a, it's a great place. And, and it has it spectacular is, furnishings. Right, and surprisingly few people that live in St. Genevieve have been in it, or if they have, it was they were in fourth grade and they haven't come back. Yeah. I hear that all the time. Right. They say, oh, I should come back. I haven't been there since fourth grade, so. And we keep the house open from like April 1st to the first weekend in December. But we'll do group tours any time of the year. Absolutely. The other building that we currently own is the Kyle Schwent House, which is our headquarters, and that's down on 2nd Street. And it's a 1813 stone building. Uh, French didn't really build a lot in stone, but uh, uh, and the, the Schwent part of it is that the Schwents donated that yeah. building to us. And that uh, houses not only our headquarters, our, but it also has the Mecca Research Library, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And probably the project that most people see us involved with is called the Restoration of the Memorial Cemetery. Uh, we've been involved in that for many years, and back even in the 60s, Lucille Bossler took it on as a project. Uh, back in the late 90s, uh, we got involved in, in and actually had a Save America's Treasures grant, uh, yeah. worked out with the, the archdiocese that it now belongs to the city. We have a city, uh, pri uh, city and us are in a partnership. We do the restoration uh, for the work city for that. Yeah. And, and that's, been a, that's been a really good project uh, and, and we 
you've been able to save a lot of stones that are deteriorating. Um, there's a lot of people buried there, but we only have about 300 tombstones. We're trying to preserve those. Now, the organization is a 501c3 nonprofit. Correct. Right. Yes. Do you have an operating budget, or are you kind of like we museum people that <laughs> open the doors and just say, oh, please come in, come oh, in, come in, come in. No, please come yes. in. Yes, please come in so is we it, can is it a, make uh, the payroll. Is it a walk-in? Uh... No, as I said, it's very, it, we, we've been endowed by some people over the years, okay. not greatly, but uh, old houses, uh, Tim Good commented to me one time, very few museum houses make money. Mm. The only one that does, <laughs> the only one that makes money is Graceland. Graceland. Graceland, right. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's, it's, it's a difficult problem for us. That's, we want to encourage more tours. So we've got a lot, a lot of maintenance to do on the house. I mean, they, you just have to keep up, up on these old houses to keep them so they'll be here for another hundred yeah. years. I would like to have an army of volunteers who would be who would do two things, who would be docents in the house mm -hmm. and give tours and that we could keep the house open without great cost associated with employees and um, some gardeners who would help <coughs> us. Currently the garden of the, of the uh, Gilmore Valley needs some design, mm -hmm. some attention. Yes. Uh, and it, um, and it, it is kind of a spectacular place. It's really a nice garden and it's secluded and it's behind that that uh, brick wall, and it's, but it, if, I wish that we had a whole bunch of volunteer yeah. docents and our <laughs> gardeners. Well, you know, th that, this is one of the reasons that uh, the powers that be with the museum, as you well know, Sarah, being involved with the museum, um, started the Spotlight series, and initially it was to spotlight the current museum, and and as we, over the last couple of years, got more involved in the creation of the Learning Center, um, somebody came up with the idea, why don't we share this one hour once a month with some of the other nonprofits in town so they can get their yeah. message out. Right. And um, I, don't, I don't know who came up with the initial idea to do this. I'm sure, I'm sure the person was a very intelligent gentleman with a Boston accent, but I'm not quite <laughs> sure if it, that was his idea to, you know, bring the other nonprofits to the forefront. So, I, as I said, you can get you can get your message out, and this is the platform. Yeah. To be honest with you, I don't know how many people actually watch the show tonight live, but um, the, the TV people, uh, Charles downstairs, who's running the board for us, uh, Don Pritchett, who oversees operations, um, they'll they'll put this show, they'll loop this show m as much as maybe a half a dozen times uh, throughout the month. Uh, but the really cool thing is that within a couple of days, it gets uploaded to That's YouTube, yeah. and the yeah. potential for people, the potential. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying gobs and gobs of people right. are yeah, watching, right, yeah. but, but the, the, the potential, the potential yeah. is there. But they can they can look, they can kind of see what they're getting their hits on with Google Analytics. And, and I know Don's commented in the past that they'll have people in Arkansas that watch our board meetings at the city board right. meetings at but, times. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, as, as we go through the evening, um, you know, I would hope if there's, if there's something um, like that, that um, the portrait you're restoring, you know, I, you know, let's we'll talk as we get further into the show. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. let's talk about that uh, uh, among among other things. Um, Kind of switching gears without switching gears. Um, <laughs> let's talk a little about the. Uh, I, I think it's one of the coolest events I've ever witnessed. <laughs> to, to ask you know? Ricky what she told me, the AP oh, reporter. Oh, oh, go ahead. Okay, well, I I must preface it by saying that I was ha I'm a type one diabetic and I was having a low blood sugar issue at the time, but they called and asked for a quote and I said it's the most fun you can have in St. Genevieve with your clothes on there you go. <laughs> and it brought people from all over the country came that year to participate in the King's Ball and we had a a the biggest crowd we've ever had we we didn't have to turn anybody away but it was very close it was very close we had people as crammed in there as we possibly could and uh, but we have that kind of a crowd now most years and uh, because once you've seen it, once you've attended, and once you have partaken of it, 
you're coming back. You know, you're going to have to have some other reason to to uh, make you not come because uh, once you've done it, you want to come back and do it again. And uh, so that, therefore, you know, people bring somebody new, and then the next year, new people come, and then they bring somebody new and then they get their own table because I've already got somebody already before January ever started had somebody call who had been a first time applicant last year who has brought a new crowd of her friends for this year so we've already got a table reserved since the first of December so which is very early for us to have reserved tables but but uh, yes it is it's not anything you can think it of it is and the people from St. Genevieve that haven't been and say, oh, they probably wouldn't enjoy it, they don't know what they're missing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that, you're spot on. Okay, now, let's bring all the viewers in, into the venue. Um, you mentioned tables. Um, I, I, I've been there the last three or four years yeah. because of the relationship, and thank you, that the the King's Ball have with the museum, right? And, and we, you know, we we appreciate that. And I've been a casual observer, and mm -hmm. as an observer, I generally enjoyed myself. I can only imagine what it was like to be an actual participant. We need to get you out there on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, oh, this year we will. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll, <laughs> we'll make sure. If, of if that. we do, there'll be no cameras, and <laughs> yeah. it won't be live. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. But um, let's let's take let's take those viewers that 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 have roots in Saint Genevieve that know that the year kicks off with this spectacular event. But let's 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 paint a picture okay. for okay. If you're coming, and if it, it is possible, come in eighteenth century costume or Renaissance Fair or Civil War or whatever kind of historic costume that you have. We don't insist that you come in costume, but it is more fun if you're in costume. And so you come in and you see everybody around you is in in costume or sometimes in prom dresses that have been made to look historic or right. or what have you because everybody wants to join in the fun and and we do have people that reserve tables and so you may not get to sit right on the dance floor because usually those tables are reserved well in advance and i imagine right now my phone is ringing at home from people saying <laughs> don't forget to reserve mine you know right. and uh, so, so uh, you come, uh, the, the VFW hall holds, has an open bar so you can buy your, your drinks there. We encourage everybody to bring their own refreshments. And if you don't bring refreshments, be sure to introduce yourself around to somebody that has some good food on their table and that's how you get your own refreshments. And, uh, and come in and uh, and you'll wander around and introduce yourself to people. And if you're all by yourself, for sure, introduce yourself to me because I will take you around and introduce you to a group who will get you around to, uh, so that you meet people and you're not sitting alone by yourself. No one does that. If anybody comes in just two people by themselves or one by themselves, they'll sit at, at my table or Ellie's table because between the two of us, we have about four or five tables and we just fill them up with people and we have enough food for that many also and uh and then the band starts and the first oh, the, what about the, the oh, le petit chanteurs, le petit chanteurs, chanteurs yes. so that you can feel right into the spirit le petit chanteurs will be there singing french songs french carols and and the marseillaise to to begin the ball and they're there setting the, the tone uh, with the music the, pre the half hour before the ball begins. And so they're there doing that as everybody is coming in and marching in and getting their refreshments out and, and setting their tables. Now we put out a plain tablecloth and a couple of little candles on the table. And those in the know bring their fancier tablecloths and candelabras and what have you <laughs> to whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. yes. Yeah. So you look around and you see the tablescapes and they get elaborate every year. Uh, last year, Marie Antoinette had a candelabra that Liberace would have loved. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, it could yes. have hung from somebody. She might have pulled it out of the ceiling. Because uh, I yes. Mean, uh, yeah. yes, 
And she's been back twice this yeah, year, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, just this year in St. Genevieve. But then the, when the band begins, they, they play the Grand March. You don't need to know anything but to march or to, st to walk. walk. Follow walk the person in front of you. Follow the person yeah. in front of you or follow the, every other person when they start peeling off. Follow the person that's ahead of the person in front of you. And so that's all you do with that. So no skill. No need to even count. Keep time to the music. Why did she look at me when she said <laughs> <laughs> I think I now, That wasn't personal, Bob. You're out there marching along with everybody else. But everybody is out on the floor for the Grand March. And and the band has told us that we have the largest Grand, grand March of anywhere. Oh, we have about 16 wide going down. Yeah, yeah. 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 16 wide is, is something to see coming down the dance floor. And that's what that everybody kind of tucked in as close as they can get to get 16 wide down the dance floor. Uh, so that's our first dance that starts the e evening off. So if you think, well, I can't go, I don't dance, I don't know how to dance. Number one, you don't have to know how to know, do these dances. The band will teach you the dances. And it really is a matter of being able to count to one, two, three, four. Just and know your left foot from your right. right. That, that helps. helps. That it's really helps. funny watching the groups. They'll practice and then they start the dance. And when the people start out, it's kind of ragged. But by the end of the dance, yeah. they're really <laughs> cutting <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. they're, They know what they're doing by that point. Yeah. 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 And so the, the people that have come year after year, a lot of times will go over and if there's a group that is having a little trouble, they'll straighten them out and get them started in the right right direction and so so you really don't need to know how to dance and and for the most part everyone is a learning experience and, and it's and it's usually it's not the modern kind of dance oh it's no traditional no. dancing round dances square dances mm -hmm. uh, yeah that, line dances, line dances that virginia kind of reel thing. yes the virginia <laughs> reel is our favorite our favorite mm -hmm. here and uh, so so it is it is things that you do not know how to do until you get there and they say, get four couples and make a square. Form two lines, get in two circles, have a partner, don't have a partner. And there, then, there, there are dances with partners and there are dances that don't require matter. partners. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So. Paddle dance is a really, really po popular dance, really popular. And you don't have to dance. And you, you don't, you have, don't to have to dance, dance <laughs> at all and you just get in lines of men and women and they bring a paddle or a broom or whatever they can get from the from the place and uh, and they make the paddles and usually they have two or three lines of paddle dancers and then they still want to do it again before the evening is over so so yeah it's it's very popular and everybody is out there and we have everyone from babies to old folks that are there. Careful. I'm looking at the two of you together. I've noticed that. And See? you know what? The, the, the camera doesn't lie. So <laughs> when we watch this, she, she, you're going to see her looking See, at I you. I looked at them completely because I thought they're going to look back at me yeah. because I'll have to dance with one of these guys. For the, for the we, old. Do, we do encourage to bring your kids. Bring your kids. Yeah. Bring yeah. your kids. The very first night that I I was at, at the table representing the museum, and this was maybe three years ago, I noticed I noticed two things. Almost instantly I noticed the age difference in people and the younger kids were in costumes as well. Yes, I mean yes. it, it wasn't like mom and dad or a nanny was dragging the kids because they they didn't want to leave them at home. They were in they were in costume as well. A lot of high school age girls, yeah. uh, yes. in, and you mentioned this, yes. in their prom gowns, but the prom gowns had a little of this, a little of that, mm -hmm. to make them look like a, a period piece. Right. Second thing I noticed, and it was at the end of the night that I was able to connect the dots, strangers do come in through the front door right. when, they, when they pay their admission fee, mm -hmm. but there are no strangers who leave at the end of the night. <laughs> no. And that, that, that speaks volume to how, how welcoming uh, 
everybody that's is, behind the scenes the, happen to be. The committee for the King's Ball is Ellie and I, and lately Suzanne Thomas has joined us on the committee, and this is it. We're the whole committee. When it comes to decorating the, the hall, we ask our friends. Can we drag it? <laughs> drag it. Yeah. 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 We have dirt on all of them. And, uh, and, and we have more friends that come and that decorate. At the end of the evening, whoever is still there puts everything away. And it doesn't matter if they were people that drove from St. Louis and still have to drive back. Whoever is there, when the lights go up, they start cleaning yeah, up. Every, everybody every, helps. Yeah. yeah. I, I have never, ever had to go around, you know, and drag the trash cans around and clean things up because already somebody has it's started already that. Done it and started gathering the, the lights and the tablecloths and everything, and so it's, it's amazing. It is, it is one of the events in town that everybody can go to and have fun, and it doesn't matter uh, how old you are mm -hmm. or how young you are or what church you go to or whether you do or do not go to church or what kind of job you have. Everybody is welcome, and everybody can go and have fun. It was traditional in St. Genevieve in the colonial period for them to have dances on Sunday after church. They'd have one for the kids, and there'd be some matrons there to teach manners, and then they would have a, a ball later. Uh, and then during this season, they had lots of balls. Yeah. And right. The King's Ball well, was traditional. Well, yeah, the, traditionally, this was the 12th night ball, the 12th days after Christmas. Mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, uh, Feast of the Three Kings or the Epiphany, Epiphany. Mm -hmm. on the sixth. Yeah. So that was what this was originally, but we had we actually changed our the Saint Genevieve's Kings Ball because of the the French community across the river Prairie de Rocher uh, was uh, they always had theirs on the twelfth night on on Epiphany. So we changed our because we liked to some of our people like to go to their mm -hmm. uh, and their they, ball and, their and they like to come to ours. ours. So we moved ours to the first Saturday in February to accommodate both sides. But it but this was the original twelfth night mm -hmm. ball. Yeah, and Cahokia has they have a King's Ball also, a little bit different than ours, and theirs is the Saturday night before Ash Wednesday. And so back when we were trying to find a spot, we found that that first Saturday in February, we weren't stepping on, on toes. anybody's toes. So that's where we placed it, and it still fit, fits in between that 12th night and Ash Wednesday, which is that period of time when in between, because actually it was a series of balls. One s Sunday, they'd have a ball, and then the next, whoever got baby Jesus, the next weekend, his whoever was king. You know, whoever yeah, was you better king. explain that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you better explain right. that, right. baby Jesus. I even, I even brought baby Jesus with me here, just in case, and so that we could could see him. And believe me, we don't let him out. But there's baby Jesus, and he is. We hide that in a cake. In a cake, and so baby Jesus goes in the cake and two beans, and I go in, she cuts the cake, so that everybody knows that this is not rigged at all. Mm -hmm. I go in and I hide baby Jesus in the beans, and I put my fingerprints, after I've washed my hands, all over the cake, and move the cake around so it looks like I've touched most everything. Because one year, some guy said, no, that one hasn't been touched, I'm not taking it, so I move the cakes around and then she comes in and she I move the, move cake the cakes around again, so, so so when it comes out I, I have, have no neither one of us know where it she is. doesn't know which one I put it in and I don't know which one when they come out has has baby Jesus in or the beans in it so whoever gets the piece of cake with baby Jesus in it now becomes the new king or unless it's leap year, then we have a queen's ball. And, and, and we have think next year it is queen's next year, year not, not this year, year but next year. year. And is recently, the there's ball. been a junior cake also. Yeah, yes, right. we yes. we encourage, encourage the young kids, the teenagers, to come. So we have a cake, a special cake for them. We give a, a prize. A, 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 a there's a gift. A, yeah, to, there's to, a bean in in, in the that, in junior that cake. cake. Yeah. So, so we have a young person that's there, gets that chance without getting to be the king, 
but getting to be a junior attendant. And so, so we're able to, able to have those. But for reasons that I won't name names at, somebody kept baby Jesus. And so I mark his, the back of him as so with the date so we know that it's the correct one. We have and some false kings. We have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's actually messing with the baby Jesus. Oh, one, yeah. one year, one year, <laughs> they couldn't find the, the person didn't admit to it. Oh, yes, that was a terrible year. That was a terrible year. And we had to take the first one to find the bean to be the ki queen. That was that was our first queen's ball. And, and then I had one king that on a weekly basis, the king would say, I still have baby Jesus, I still have baby Jesus. So then I had to start m marking him. So now it is a marked baby Jesus, and, uh, and we know what they look like, so you can't even bring your own in and hide it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so and it is marked, so, so yeah. there's no, Wow. We won't tell someone you wouldn't do to be king. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Some yes, people indeed. can ride in a parade for one day and kind of go to sleep with the crown on there, their head. There and, are people um, like that, things. yes. <laughs> and, and I have been trying to get the pictures of that ever since. So I'm going to get them yet. Yet. I've seen them, but I haven't gotten them yet. <laughs> and, uh, well, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this because you had said something about people coming, you know, year yeah. after year. After. Well, three. Three years ago, a couple came down from St. Louis, and they they sat off behind me. I was at the, the table by the door, mm -hmm. and I was helping uh, uh, doing the admissions plus promoting the museum with some right. literature, um, which we're not going to have the literature this year because we're in the process of the developing a learning center, so I will be available to help with ticket sales okay. uh, that night. Good, thank uh, you. You, Good. Can, you know, thank that you. way there. You know that'll be covered, um, and if you need to weigh me before I start collecting money and then weigh me <laughs> afterwards, I don't have a problem if with that. If you come either. up I mean, like <laughs> that, here, I, I will. <laughs> but um, this couple from St. Louis, they was they was sitting beh uh, uh, behind me, and whoever had the table next to me gradually brought them in, and, and at one time they were they were they called themselves professional dancers, but not professional in the way that they were on Broadway or they did musicals mm -hmm. and that they they liked to dance they were and they were here to observe the French dancing mm -hmm. and matter of fact they actually both had kind of um, silky jackets I remember with something embroidered on the back well that was three years ago but two years ago um, I'm at the table with the museum stuff uh, helping out with collecting and they came in and, and they remember us and yes and no I could remember I, yeah. I recognized the clothes yeah, right, yeah, you know yeah. they had yeah. the, but there was four people there were two couples now yeah. and the two couples went over behind where they were the year before and they were watching eventually they 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 worked their way when the dancing really that you know that, that started <laughs> and again the whoever was at that table, mm -hmm. you know, brought them. Although this second time they, that the couple, they did bring coolers and food mm -hmm. stuff, and, but they, they did the picnic routine with them. Yeah. Uh, last year, there were eight. Eight, four, four couples came, <laughs> and last year they stayed over. So the King's Ball had a positive effect at the Microtel because there were four couples uh, staying overnight and... Uh, they said that maybe next year, which would be this year, sure, yeah. would be when they they were comfortable I mean, enough seeing what was going on. They may and, and I, I'll make you a promise if 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 I see the original couple or okay. if they come in and say identify themselves, I'll uh, I'll make sure I introduce you oh, to them because do. they've yes. been they've yeah. been coming back, coming back, coming back, and their numbers have been increasing. <laughs> So, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. I, and I, I, I truly hope to see them uh, this year. Good. Yeah, good. That's wonderful. Yeah. We yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. we do. Yes. Now, the King's Ball is one of several activities that actually fall under the umbrella of the foundation now. We've become the parent organization that, because for... We're getting old. <laughs> and for <laughs> reasons say. of expediency and yes. that we have existing bank accounts and the money can... Right. You know, so there's...
the King's Ball, the uh, spirit reunion that takes place in the cemetery, and the French Festival are all, um, the foundation is the umbrella organization for all of those events during the year. All right, can we, can we go into the other two events in the same kind of sure. detail? Sure. And well, that yeah, brings everybody I, up to I speed. I think there's a, more that, you know, that we want to talk about. Sure. Because I, those are events that we invite people to that are more kind of fun events, but we have, we have a lot of educational events too. Yep. Yeah. We have a speaker's bureau. We right. have like 20 some different talks that we offer free of charge to not for profits in a 30 mile region. Or here. to schools. Or I mean, schools, schools are not for profit, right. But, right. Yeah. but the speakers also go to schools. Yeah. We have an annual history conference on St. Genevieve in the last couple of years. It's been very good. We've got uh, almost 80 people right. come up. We have, yeah. we've, got, we've had people from Montana, from California, from Virginia come in to talk. Where, where are the venues that these are, well, are offered at? The, um, History. The, the history, history conference is, it has been out at the community center, but we're going to move it to the Berg Center because of room okay. yeah. things this year. Um, the, the Speakers Bureau, they, it's, just they? go to our website, you can find it, uh, and if you want to arrange one of them, we've talked in Chester. Yeah, and, and the speakers will come to you. Mm -hmm. And we also give a couple of talks during the year, like a spring talk and a fall talk. It can be anything from uh, how to die with indigo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun. Good. Very interesting. Um, some of the other things we have a, a educational research award that we give out for somebody doing a dissertation, a thesis, a special project on St. Genevieve uh, history, and it's a thousand uh, dollar stipend. Um, scholarship. And, and one of our new initiatives this year, for the first time, we're going to offer a scholarship to a, a Valley St. Gen or our uh, homeschool students is going to go into uh, study uh, historic preservation, archaeology, anthropology, or history. Um, you mentioned a web address. Yeah, well, let's see, our, our uh, email is ffrsg at att.net, and our email, our website page is historicstgen.org. And it's got, it's got all of our, like our membership uh, application forms on there, mm -hmm. Speakers Bureau. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, uh, Foundation for Restoration of St. Genevieve, that we post on. All right, be, but before we close tonight, in our closing segment, I, somebody okay. remind me to okay. remind okay. you to give that information out again. Okay. Right now, we don't, I, I, didn't, I didn't give Charles a heads up to, you know, Type incorporate in. sure. that information yeah. while we go live, but if, if we give the information a second time, mm -hmm. okay. uh, people will be able to. Uh, now, um, just hypothetically speaking, now with with with, with some of your uh, your your lecture series and stuff, if let's say a, a fledging um, museum learning center had the proper uh, venue, like a um, like a theater that 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 sat. It used to be you call it like you could call it the Lyceum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. There you go. So you'd be more than willing to come okay. and sure. do your thing yeah. there. Yeah. And we always we have a whole variety of topic, topics, anything from civil war to personalities to history to uh, costumes, kind of, dress, costumes, dress, yeah. textiles. Yeah. 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 Uh, we also uh, maintain something called the Mecca Research Library, which is a collection of books related to the mid-Mississippi Valley. Uh, there's really kind of three things in there. We have some manuscripts uh, that people can research on, and we also um, have some genealogical materials. That's one of the parts that people get interested in. Um, and I guess one of the other things is we, we get calls from the Welcome Center. They'll, somebody will call down there and say, what about this part of history? And so they'll contact somebody in the foundation and. It's really funny, we, there was one right before Christmas and it's discovered a whole new thing about some important people in the fur trade that came from St. Genevieve. And the guy might give be one of our lecturers at the history conference. I mean, Excellent. you never know, you meet people on the street and talk to them and they end up being speakers sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not, and some of them are independent researchers, we've had college mm -hmm. professors. So it's again, getting the word out about the French history, the St. St. Genevieve history, our history conference is just not colonial, it goes all the way up to what we've done the 1930s. Yeah. Yeah. So. And we've had lectures on the Iron Mountain Railroad, the Plank Road, the Plank Road. Yeah. Plank. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And foundation members are frequently tour guides, provide tour guides for the Welcome Center, or step on guides, or guides for independent groups that want a private guide or church tour. To church tours. Church tours. Church tours. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the next question would be, how does somebody that's, that's watching tonight's show that's interested in getting involved, how does that person, who does he contact? Or how does he get? The best way is to contact the office first. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can do that by phone. The Jack's usually there on what? Monday, Mondays and Thursdays. Thursday, most of the time. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, um, and that, that phone number is 573-883-9622. And again, they can email us at ffrsg at att.net. Uh, they can volunteer at one of our events. Uh, yeah, and contact as, as any Sarah of us said, if, that's a if good it's way somebody to, to that get involved. Knows us. Uh, yeah. But it, we're not just a social organization. We we do have some fun at yeah, times. Yeah, we try. We try. Yeah. We try. Uh, and we also are serious about education and history and preservation uh, of St. James. We've been involved with this National Park uh, oh. site thing from the very beginning. Yeah. Yes. I mean, 20 years of, of effort with the foundation to, to make that happen. And really longer than that, because there was meetings before it ever really got started that you know, the first of let, what do you think, should we send the letters? And then the letters got sent and then it started and, and uh, Back when Frank Myers was president. When, and, yeah, Fra and, when Frank and, was president. And then part of the, the thing is Mickey and Jack and Lauren and, 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 yeah, and, and we went up. Have went up and went in costume to Congress, which always creates Attracts attention, yes. Yeah. And so it, it, it's just important to, to keep this history going. It's one of the things St. Genevieve has going for it is we have the history, it's still here, it's not been moved in here, it's real. Yeah. It, it's, it's really, when you get into some of this historical stuff, it, we've had some interesting characters here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that's, I moved to St. Genevieve as an English teacher, and I was not particularly interested in history, and it has just um, been sort of, by gradual osmosis, getting dragged into events, that I've come to appreciate um, the importance of historic preservation of structures and of landscapes and of culture and of um, all those things that are associated with St. Genevieve. And it really is fascinating. And then as a teacher, I try to incorporate some of that uh, into, into my class, classroom work. Um, but I'd like to see more of that too. You know, I would, I would hope that schools would get more involved in calling on us and our speakers bureau to visit not just third and fourth grade class or classrooms, but um, mm -hmm. high school classrooms and, and history rooms. And uh, it's just, you know, it sort of gets into your blood and you, it, it is so interesting, you have to keep doing it. Like yeah. this King, the King's Ball, it, it's a tradition that's over 250 years old. Exactly. It came I came from, from, France from where them. I came from, I came from St. Louis, which is an old French town, but it doesn't have the traditions that Dick Saint Jen, I was blown away when I first came here, and I, I thought this is really neat to have <laughs> some place that has traditions that old. I, I, I just yeah. couldn't believe it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just you know, exactly. exactly. Another great old tradition. Mm -hmm. And, they, and so, they just did that uh, yeah, right, the, yeah. the other night. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And those traditions are a few other places, but only a very few other places. Not many. No. Not. Not and, at all. And we still try to keep a kinship with Prairie de Rocher and Cahokia, the Holy Family Maurice right. out of there, and, and old mines. I mean, we're, we were all yeah, we and they have prosperous French communities, but we yeah. were French communities. They well, have there king's many, cakes. They have them around in 250. Yeah. yeah. In, in New Orleans, they have king's cakes, and you can get online and find out king's cakes recipes, but it's not the same tradition that we have here. It, I mean, it all comes from that same tradition. But that's taken a whole different approach to having a King's Ball and, and celebrating. It's, it's different. Now, if I could return to one of the you mentioned earlier about the portrait. I think that was something that, that evolved from somebody visiting St. Yes. <laughs> Genevieve yeah. uh, and, and fell in love with what we've got here and was in a position to uh, offer to the foundation 
a, a very historic portrait that uh, we accepted the responsibility for as far as, as, as raising funds in order to have the, the portrait restored. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to say that it was a su successful campaign and in, uh, at the end of November, it, it was all paid off and is now hanging in the Gibor Valley House. And it is a painting of Catherine Beauvais, Beauvais. who, yeah. of course, has ties to St. Genevieve. Catherine yeah. Beauvais Valley. So, yeah. Valley. Yes. So, yeah. well, and she yes. also was mentioned in Henry Breckenridge's book when he came to St. Genevieve and stayed with the Beauvais in the house that's still here. Yeah. I mean, those stories of those people and the fact that we still have the buildings and they're still livable and they're still in use is, is pretty amazing. Right. And the house that she lived in as an adult is still here and being lived in still as private residence, as is the house that she, the Vital St. Jean Beauvais house that where she grew up is still lived in as a private residence. So, and her portrait is hanging in the Gibor Valley House. So, yes. yeah, I encourage people to come and see it. We'll be open next spring. And if you really want to see it before spring, give any of us a call. We'll yeah. get you in. <laughs> yeah. But we, we have lots of opportunities, and you can and you can work on things that you enjoy. If you enjoy research and history, you can work on the Mecca Research Library. If you want to do preservation, you can work in the cemetery or one of these various activities, or be a speaker in the house. Um, yeah. <laughs> Help give tours. Yep. Once the school tours the start, garden. we always yeah. need extra tour people once school tours start coming through. So so we're more than happy to have extra people then. And we and we'll so. do training if you want to be a tour guide. Yeah. Um, I mean we have mm -hmm. some manuals and stuff to and go through so and people can kind of tailor what they what they talk about. You, you have to listen to your audience mm -hmm. and find out what they're interested in, and that's what you you discuss. And yeah. we're always looking for more hands-on things uh, that people can do. But they, it's much better than telling them something. Right. We always have funny stories. We have a little piece of uh, Jockey Board had a tannery, so we have some. We have a beaver skin. <laughs> we have a fox. We have a little strip of buffalo. No, it's bear. Bear, bear skin. It, yeah. It's about that long, about that wide. And when you're doing school tours, invariably one of the boys will put that on his head like a mohawk. And I was touring some retired professors from France. I mean, they're in their 60s and 70s. And I'm talking. I look over. Here's a 70-year-old professor with a mohawk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So you can't take yeah. the kid out of uh, No. <laughs> and that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. we're hoping that the important work of the foundation continues for a very long time, mm -hmm. and that's creating some uh, appreciation for and awareness of the importance of historic preservation and, uh, and, and what's good for tourism and what's good for economic growth is good for preservation. Yeah. And what's good for preservation is good for the foundation, and the foundation likes to share the knowledge that we have about the importance of preservation we have, and how to do it, not yeah, just that it's right. Yeah, we have people that sit on the, the Heritage Commission, on the land, uh, we've been land on several arts, other ones yeah. 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 over the years. Yeah. We've worked with the city on preservation ordinances from mm -hmm. the very first one in the 1970s. He's right, um, right, exactly. Put out a guide for homeowners mm -hmm. in the historic district about how you go about things. and So mm -hmm. it's... It, We've got some very unique properties here. Exactly. And as you, we talk, what do you call it? The space, uh, the, the sense of sense of space, or the sense of the buildings and the culture that we have. We need to keep that. Mm -hmm. And what's yes. good, you know, with all of this, what's good for tourism is good for the community because the tourists yes. come, they eat here, they stay here, they fill their gas with car. Their cars <laughs> with gas, gas here. Well, and they could do the other. They could do the other. Yeah. And some of them then move here. And yeah. some of them yeah. move here. Yeah. It is yeah. surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. It is, well, it probably isn't surprising to those people that have moved here, but to other people that a lot of people that do move here. In fact, we have, we actually picked up one new member this this year that moved here. From being a, tur a tourist. And part of the reason is, is because if you grew up here, these are just houses that people lived in. Right. And they're not that special, but they are. And Because uh, you don't realize they're not everywhere else. Right. But we've had some great preservationists over the years. The, the, the uh, 
Dunsey's, the work yes. they did in the 50s yeah. and yeah. 60s, the in Danes, the uh, yeah. Lucille, Lucille Bosler. I mean, without that work that they did in the 50s and 60s, we'd be in tr trouble with our mm -hmm. lack of historic houses mm -hmm. if yeah. they hadn't done it. Yeah. And, and the foundation tries to recognize that yeah. every year, giving it Historic Preservation Award. That's what I was, yeah. was going to mention, too, is that we just had our Christmas gala and, and uh, that we always award a, a preservation award. And, uh, and a Distinguished Service Award. Distinguished Service Award, yeah. Now, looking forward, we just started a new year. Um, with each progress, progressing year, there's usually some excess baggage that carries over from the year <laughs> before. But moving, looking forward, I, I know your short-term goal is your long-term goal, to have this party every February, is, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and, and just to get to the point where you got to hire a bouncer saying, we have to wait until two people leave before you two come in type of situation. <laughs> or but, or yeah. give us 50. Oh, y'all, yeah. give me here. Give me here. Will, yeah. And I will be at the door, so I that's not a bad idea. <laughs> I have asked the VFW if they could kind of move that wall back a ways and so we could get more people in, but they weren't reluctant, they were reluctant to do that, we're, so okay. I but don't uh, think it's going to happen. On the foundation front, um, short term plan, a long term plan, possible fundraiser, po you know, um, uh, endowment plans or we welcome all endowments and donations. Yeah. And I will yeah. say that like many organizations in town, uh, we have uh, an aging membership. And I say that with all the respect and yeah. love that I, I have for, for those of us who are aging. And, wow. uh, but you're taking a visual view tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and certainly we would like to recruit, recruit new energetic members of the foundation. The, Foundation annual annual dues are minimal. I think yeah. are they started twenty twenty five twenty five dollars. We encourage yeah. more if you want to give yeah. more. Yeah, and um, and and members who um, who want to get on board with with the importance of historic preservation and awareness of of uh, uh, the rich tapestry of culture that covers all of Saint Genevieve mm -hmm. and the surrounding area. I mean, it just. It is too special to let it get away. And just as a final thing, just because we mentioned the spirit reunion, mm -hmm. at the spirit reunion, people always say, I would like to do this the next year. And since it's, we're a little ways away from that in the past, if you're interested in doing it coming up this year, maybe think about it and give me a call. You better explain what that means. Yeah, the right. spirit reunion. Yeah, the right. spirit yeah. reunion. Well, see, those that had thought about doing it would know but the spirit reunion in the cemetery is in October it's the fourth Saturday in October we have people that dress in the costume as the people that are buried in the old old memorial cemetery and take on the persona of the people that are buried there and by lantern light people go go through and listen to the stories of those that are buried in the cemetery as if it was coming from the horse's mouth. Mm -hmm. And so every year as people go through and hear these stories, invariably people come and say, can I do it next year? And I may or may not hear from them until a few days before. And that doesn't work. They, you really need to research their char the character right. long yeah. beforehand. And we can help identify cre uh, people, uh, people mm -hmm. and age appropriate to the person. We've mm -hmm. had little young people I mean, yes. We, we have a 13-year-old Civil War drummer boy buried there, and we've had that played before. And yeah. Had it other is and there's delightful living history. That's yeah. what it, it is. is. It's just, it is. Yeah. And we always try to get a few new people every year uh, to expand. Mm -hmm. And it's not always the prominent people in town either. Yeah. That would that lived in that time period. We have between 3,500 and 5,000 people buried there, and we have Native Americans, uh, African Americans. Uh, some couple of Scottish guys, even, yeah. and uh, yeah. some Germans. There's and, an Italian girl in there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's really. Some Irish. Some Irish. Some Irish, Irish, some Irish yes. Yeah. And some unknown, some unnamed yeah. people. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, it's, this is extremely in, in, informative. And we're at that point of the, uh, the hour where, um, if we have any, your last shout out to the, the viewership. Uh, <laughs> 
you know, final final say from let's, uh, let's both do, groups. Let's try the, the phone number and the website one more time. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah nice, okay, so the nice phone and, number is 573-883-9622. The uh, email address it stands for Foundation for Restoration of St. Genevieve. So it's F F R S G at att.net. And our website can be found at historicstgen.org. H I S T O R I C S T E G E N dot O R G. And ladies, final uh, final statement if from anybody the. Anybody wants to make reservations at the tables, they can call me. I'm going to give my cell number because it's easier. It's three one four two seven seven five seven four seven. Or mine is eight five seven three eight eight three two zero nine nine. And if they reserve a table, we take six or more. If six. that's if yeah. they don't have that. We have tables. We have tables that they can eight and ten, and we can combine groups if we have to. Okay. Cool. And the people don't have to make reservations. No, so. no, no. no. It's and the admission there. price but if, is. But if you have a large group, it, you you want to sit together. Right. So that's yeah. why we have the right. reservations. Right. Yeah. The, the admission price. The admission oh. price. We raised it. it yes, yeah. we did. It's ten dollars for, for, for children, children, for students, a students, 15, and, 15 and fifteen for adults. For adults. I had a brain fade. I couldn't. Um, I re-raised it, and I couldn't remember what. No, band, right. We raised it because the band raised it. The band raised it for the first time it. in many, it's, many years. The band raised it's it. It's premier entertainment for fifteen dollars. Yes, it, it is. is. Yeah, it, 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 it truly is. For someone like myself that has no roots in this town, uh, a transplant, um, I, I truly enjoyed. Well, maybe it was the fact that I was handling money all the time. <laughs> no, all, all kidding aside. All, all Where kidding do you think aside. We don't need any money. Yeah, all, all kidding aside. It, it's it's really a, a truly uh, a truly unique uh, and fun event, and yeah. I, I'd like to thank you all once again for for uh, coming tonight. Um, uh, I more so than anything else, I'm learning more and more about the community that I am now a part of by once a month having other uh, the 501c3 nonprofits come in and it's it's an educational evening for myself in, in addition to the viewership and um, once again uh, thank you all I'm sure I'll see you all in about a month right because yes. you'll all be at the uh, the at King's the Ball Absolutely. Yeah. and uh, I'd like to thank Charles uh, who's running the board uh, as he usually does uh, for these uh, spotlight shows and um, I want to thank you, the viewers, uh, for tuning in. And I guess, Charles, that's a wrap. Uh, we'll see you the first Wednesday of next month when it will be the Lions Club and members of the Museum Learning Center uh, promoting the uh, second annual casino night. And I promised I wouldn't go into any other detail other than that. So that's a wrap, Charles. Thank you.